All right. Uh, I prepare this course in English because the people that uh, ask me to teach them music, they prefer, they ask me to do it in English. But I realize now that there are more Spanish-speaking people than <laughs> English-speaking well, people. But uh, I don't know. Somebody can help. <laughs> Because everything is in English, and I have to follow it in English. It's easier for me than to be translated. And it's hard for me to be translated from what is written in English. Anyway, all right. A gift of God, music for believers. That is our course. All right. Praise the Lord with harps. Use harps with ten strings to make music for him. That is Psalm 33, 2. In the Bible, music is an essential part of the worship service for the Lord. And in 1 Chronicles 25, 7 says, All these 24 men were experts, and their fellow Levites were trained musicians. Look at that. They were trained musicians. There were 288 men in all. All of them trained musicians. So in Israel, they had music as a profession. And they dedicated time and energy to develop their talents with music and in music. The Spirit of Prophecy says, and Sister Ruth, please help me to read it in English, please. The history of the songs of the Bible is full of suggestion as to the uses and benefits of music and song. Music is often perverted to serve purposes of evil, and it thus becomes one of the most alluring agencies of temptation. But, rightly employed, it is a precious gift of God, designed to uplift the thoughts to high and noble themes, to inspire and elevate the soul. Amen. That is the purpose of music, brethren. Uplift the thoughts to high and noble themes, to inspire and elevate the soul. That is the basic principle of the acceptable music before the Lord. A music that doesn't have the, that principle is not good, all right? So if somebody asks you, what is the right music? What music can we hear? That is the basic principle. It must uplift the thoughts to hide and noble themes and inspire and elevate the soul. All right, what is music? Okay, it's an art. Music is an art. And the art consists in organize and combine sounds and silence because it's amazing. In music, silent is also music. And that is combined, organized in time in a way that it can be pleasant to the ear. There is music that is not real pleasant, but well, it's still music, but that is what music is. Now, because music is the combination or organize, organization of sounds, what is sound? Sound is the sensation perceived by the organs of hearing when vibrations, sound waves, reach the ear. Okay, what is sound? They're sound waves. Okay, yeah, sound is what our ear perceives, you see? This is what happens, okay? When we hear, it's just a set of waves reaching our ear. And our brain uh, analyze, uh, it analyzes those waves and it perceives it as sounds, music or any sound, all right? Now, everything is produced by vibration. Now, what is a vibration? Vibration is a periodic motion of a rigid or elastic body or medium force from a position or state of equilibrium. Okay. I have here a steel ruler. This is vibration. This move. This is vibration. All right. Now, when I put this, this here, yeah. it vibrates. And you hear a sound, right? Yeah. Okay, and depending, if, you, if I, this, the, then the vibration is slower, that's it. Okay, what is happening? 
the ruler is fixed. And then when I press it down, still fixed. But when I relieve it, it produces a movement. That every movement creates a wave. And those waves reach my ear and it is perceived as a sound. So the vibration is a periodic motion of a rigid or elastic body or a medium force from a position or a state of equilibrium. All right? This is what you see in the water. Water is a liquid body. And then when you move it, you alterate it, it produces waves. You see how it is, uh, the movement is projected. The waves are projected outside in that way. But this is a picture of a, a string. It is vibrating there. You see the vibration right here. This is a fixed string. It is vibrating. It is moving. It's, it's simply like this. All right? Now, compression and rarefaction. Go ahead, read, please. These terms refer to the alternation of increased compression and decreased rarefaction, pressure in the air caused by an activated vibrating surface or air column. Okay, all of this is important to understand because when I push it down, then when I relieve it, it will push the air. When it co comes back, it pushes the air around it, and it creates the wave. You see, if I do this, everything is moving, and that is moving the air. It's a matter of everything be combined. Yeah, everything is in touch by the air. All right, so compression is the action of pushing. But while it pushes, it is illustrated that way. OK, one complete cycle of compression and rarefaction produces a vibration or sound wave. It is there. All right? You see there. This is the speaker. And then this is the compression. The air is compressed by the voice or by the ruler or anything that produces an action. And then there is like the pressure here and the depression here. The, uh, the, the strong part is called crest, and the lower part uh, is trough. Trough. That's the name of the, uh, the waves. The crest is the higher part, let's say, for example, here. You see? This part is the crest, and the lower part is the trough. All right? That's what it works. Now, this is a sound, a, a sound wave, okay? From here to here, okay? This is a complete sound wave or vibration. Vibration and sound, in this case, are synonyms, are similar. Frequency. Frequency refers to the number of compression rarefaction cycles that occur per unit of time, usually one second. Audible sounds for the human ear range from 20 to 20,000 cycles per second. Mm -hmm. So dependent, uh, let me put it in, I'll give you an example with my pamphlet. Okay, it is from 20 to 20,000 vibrations per second. It changes a lot. This is a low set of waves vibrating, okay? The vibration is low, it's not so big. Now, very high. This is close to 20,000. It is almost painful, right? Because when it gets that 20,000 vibrations per second, it, it hurts the ear. Yeah. So everything is vibration. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is important to understand how music works because it gives us the idea. Okay. 
When I play the violin, I'm making the strings to vibrate. And every string produces a different number of vibrations. That's why we perceive the violin with different sounds. Only four strings. But this is thicker. And this is very thin. The difference is that this has lower vibrations. This has high vibrations. That's why we perceive it as low or high sounds, all right? This is theory. <laughs> OK, now, high frequency is this one. You, you see that the waves or the sound waves are closer to each other and shorter. And the long waves are for a lower sound, this way, and it has a low frequency. Our low, so low frequency means they are less in number per second. High frequency, they are more in number per second. OK, we saw the general concepts about frequency, sound, and waves, and all of that. Now, the four properties of a sound. Sound has four identifiable characteristics or properties, pitch, intensity, duration, and timbre. This is important, OK? This concept is very important. Four properties or characteristics. You have to remember them. Pitch, intensity, duration, and timber. Keep them in mind. Pitch, intensity, duration, and timbre. All right? We are going to analyze each and every one of those because that is what is going to be used when you write or read music. What is pitch? Pitch is the highness or lowness of a sound. Variations in frequency are what we hear as variations in pitch. OK. You remember frequency, right? OK. Pitch is what I played with the pen flute. Again. <laughs> Don't worry. OK. We have here. Each of those sounds are different pitches. That's it. A pitch is, is a sound in, with a determined number of vibrations or waves. OK? Continue. You understand that part? The higher the number of waves, or <laughs> the highest one, or this one. That's it. OK? The pitch is the higher, or the, the higher or lower, lower condition or yeah, characteristic of the sound. Intensity. OK, pitch then is the attitude or the lowerness of sound. Pitch. Now, intensity. Pay attention. Now. What, notice, what did you know, note? That is intensity. What other name we can give to that? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Correct. Uh -huh. We say volume, volume in Spanish, or amplitude. That's the other name, amplitude. Intensity is heard as the loudness or softness of a pitch. Okay? Soft. That's it. Okay? That's intensity, that is amplitude. Intensity. In acoustics, oh, you read, please. In acoustics, the science of sound, intensity is the amount of energy affecting the vibrating body, and the physicist measures intensity on a scale from 0 to 130 in units called decibels. Oh, 
Okay, now you know what decibels are. <laughs> decibels are the um, measures for volume of a music, for the intensity of a music or sound, or the, um, what was the amplitude of a sound. All right? So high or low? Remember, there are two highs and two lows so far we have seen, okay? What are they? One is for the number of vibrations. Higher number of vibrations, what is the result? <laughs> Higher. Lower? All right. Number of vibrations. Now, the other one, higher, is... Or... Amplitude, okay? So those concepts, that is music. All right? Don't worry. This is theory. The practical part comes later on. Two, as Sister Ruth said, said um, these are the ways in music we use to classify the amplitude. That's what I understand now. Yeah, okay. Amplitude in music is determined by this word, pianissimo. <laughs> very, very soft. Pianissimo, uh -huh. piano. Meso piano, meso forte, forte, fortissimo, fortissimo. <laughs> that is when, oh, very, very deafening. Very <laughs> when the sound is deafening. Okay. All right. Okay. So that is the signature in music for us to understand exactly what kind of sound has to be there. Exactly. When, we see that place, when you see those, and yeah. you know the amount of energy you have to apply, Correct. because in the piano, you can play. Yeah, you can play. It'll tell you how strong it is. Or you can play. Yeah. All right? That's the difference. This has not so much. This is not would be like da 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 da. Okay. Good. Oh, I know what. Okay, again, these words are referred to the amount of pressure. Yeah, the pressure, the power, or the volume, or intensity of the sound. Okay, very strong, or very soft. Okay, all right? Duration. This is all the part. Duration is the length of time a pitch or tone is sounded. Yeah, it is very simple. Number of time, okay. For example, okay, now, that's it, duration. Because if I play, Notice that there are sounds that are long and other short. Okay, that is duration. All right. In music, we have to understand that part. It's essential to understand that. All right. And all of that is the properties of a sound. Every sound, any sound, any sound have those four. Properties. I repeat, any sound has those properties. Okay, the first one was pitch. The second one, intensity. intensity. And now we are in duration. duration. This is the third one. Okay? Read, please. Matters of duration, the following terms are used meter and rhythm. Okay. We are not going to explain that now because we are going to take time for that in the future. It takes time. Okay. Meter. Meter describes regularly a reoccurring pulses of equal duration, generally grouped into patterns of two, three, four, or more, with one of the pulses in each group accented. Okay. Don't worry about the rhythm and meter. We are going to see that later on. Rhythm is the beat of time through the music. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Again, don't worry about that now. Later on, I'm, uh, we are going to see that. And the last property of sound, timbre. Yes. Even if you close your eyes, if you don't see me, you know that this is the pan flute. And the violin, you know that that is the timbre. It's that uh, special tone quality of every instrument. When you hear the guitar, you know that is a guitar, the piano, you know, oh, that is a piano. Even though you may not see that at all, but you discern because of the, that special timbre that is such <coughs> instrument. All right? What's an oboe? What's, what's, what's an oboe? It's like a wooden... Um, oboe is, yeah, it's an instrument. It looks similar, or not similar, because it's a little bit different, but more or less like uh, a clarinet. You know a clarinet? It's more or less the same, but the, the cane is different. The sound is beautiful. I have a grandchild, grandson, that he plays that beautiful. Yeah, the reed is, of, uh, uh, well, it's, no, nowadays they make it of plastic too. Oh, really? Yeah, but very cheap. And the sound is not as good as the one of wood. Yeah. Okay. Now we are going to see, we saw already the characteristics or properties, not the properties, but characteristics of a sound. Okay, remember them. Pitch, intensity. intensity Duration and timbre. Any sound. Sound is what you hear. Bing! A sound. Any sound has those four characteristics. All right? And in music, we are going to work with that. When you see a part, I mean, when you see a, a score, what you're watching there is, is that. The pitch, intensity, Duration and timber depends on the on the instrument. Basically, you work with three, and the other is the instrument. Now we are going to see the symbols. Okay. First is the staff. Go ahead. The staff in the U.S. or stave in the U.K. Mm -hmm. Okay, staff. All right? This is a staff. Yeah. Very familiar for you. Yes, brother. Yeah. Amen. That's correct. Absolutely. That is a staff. Okay. The interesting part is that in the staff, we use both the lines and the spaces between lines. So it's not only the lines, but also the spaces between the five lines. And they are counted from the bottom to the top. All right? We begin not here, but here. This is the number one, and it will be always that way. This is the first line, the second, third, and fourth, the fifth line. Right? Okay, and the spaces are four. One, two, three, and four. That is the staff in the United Kingdom is stave. We don't use that here, staff. <laughs> don't worry about that. They have different words. It's interesting. Okay. Now we are going to see now the sound no names, the sound names or notes. Okay? The notes. The various pitches are referred to by the first seven letters of the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Latin names do re mi fa sol la ti so. You continue, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This is necessary to learn by memory. That is a rule. Breton, it must be learned by heart, by memory. Definitely. Okay, I have found that the letters is a little bit complicated because we begin our scales, our, yeah, with C instead of DO. I mean, instead of A, because this is the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, E, F, G. But 
it begins, the scale begins with C instead of A. And the explanation is very complicated. So we have just to accept as people have done that. And the Spanish is much, it's much easier. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, si, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Yeah, and again, you have to learn it by memory. Absolutely, there is no way to avoid that. You have to learn it. Where you learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. For me, it's more complicated to pronounce it in English than as do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, si, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Uh, well, actually, in English, they are adopting this system, but instead of C, they say T. T like Thomas. <laughs> Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, T. It's easier for the gringos to say T than C. <laughs> you don't have any problem, brother David. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. Which one do you prefer? It's easier for you? Well, for me, because of the piano. <laughs> now, uh, on the opposite way. Mi, si, ma, si, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. No, re, do. <laughs> okay. That is a task. That is a homework. To learn by memory, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, si, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. You have to learn it. It's not difficult. There are only seven notes, but it has to be here in our memories. Always, always, this is the rule. After do, we have re. After mi, we have fa. Okay, the following note, the following note, after do is re, the, the following one is mi. Oh, after A, you have B. See, you never have, I mean, when you play, you are going to be jumping when this and that, and not a, you know, that is a combination of sounds. But the regular, the normal, the rule order is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But now, I repeat, it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That is the way, I repeat, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Yes? Does it, is this the, which method you use, is it determined upon what instrument you play or the music sheet you're reading? Or how would you no, no, no. It is valid for all instruments, right? all kind of um, music a score. Not a problem. It's valid for everything. So what I'm saying, if you can use that because for Spanish-speaking people, it would be easier to use this one. And it's valid only in, in, also in English. The problem from, for the British-speaking people, I mean, the English-speaking people, is that do, re, mi, fa, sol, la is not easy because of the tone. That's why C, D, E, F, G, A, B was created. Okay? Yeah, so any way you use is valid. It's a good idea to handle both of them because if you are speaking with English speaker, uh, people, you use this method. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. I mean A, B. It begins with C, all right? The scale begins with C, not A. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Both up and down, yes. Hadassah, you have to learn it in both the ways, up and down. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, B, A, G, F, E, C, A, A D, E. How long? B, B, C. <laughs> Wow, it's not easy. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, si, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. Ah, that's easy for me, <laughs> but not it. with the letters. Okay. Learn it by memory. You have to handle it in your mind and your brain. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, B, A, G, F, oh, by memory. E, D, C. E, E, D, C. <laughs> yeah, that was the change. Why is not do a or a is do? Yeah, the, but they invented that situation. It's not so easy. All right. So there we are in the piano. 
before the two black keys, you have C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then it is repeated. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Again, C, D, F, E, F, G, A, B. All right? And always, because this is the beginning of the scale. We begin here. It should begin here. It seems that at the beginning, people prefer to begin here. And that's why they put A here. But then, because when we begin here, this is the natural scale without any alteration. We're going to see what is that later on. Okay. This is in English. This is in Spanish. If you want to take a picture, go ahead, not a problem. But I, I'm not sure if it comes so good. I exactly. C is always before the two black keys. Because there are two and three. Two and three. Two and three black keys. So the note right before the two black keys is C. C, C. C. You see, always before the two black keys. And before the three is F. Before the three is F. All right? The center, el, el, el do central, the center do. Okay, do, re, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Si, la, sol, fa, mi, re, do. All right? That's it. It's the same. You see, do is before the two. Black kiss. Okay, we are going to see now the notes, symbols of duration. Very important. We saw before here the names of sound, the, no the names of the pitch, okay? Sound has names. This is, this is G. In this flute, this is G. After G, what do we have? A. 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 B. C, which is Do. This is exactly Do or D. D. E. F. G again. Yeah. Okay, that's it. You see, those, na those sounds receive a name. So the letters are the name given to those sounds. It is a sound. Mm -hmm. What is it? It is G. Yes. Una pregunta. Igual que en el piano, van las notas allí este, en, en esta flauta? It has the same, uh, tiene las mismas, los mismos sonidos, uh -huh. pero es más corto. Ok, aquí hay 7 por 3, 21, 22 teclas, 22 de piano, ok. Y aquí tiene, puede tener 70, ok. Ok, eh, pero las notas aquí, por ejemplo, this G is exactly, it has to combine with the G there in the piano. We are going to see that. This G goes here. This is G. You see, it's the same sound. It's G. But what is the difference? No, it's Sol and G are the same. Okay, one is Spanish, one is. But what is the difference? You see, it's a G. Timber. Timber. That is the difference. Timber. Very good. Yes, rather than. <laughs> the difference is timber. One is piano, one is, and here, here. This, that is G, but that is violin. <laughs> All right, the difference is that it's the same G, the same sol, same sol, same G, but the timbre of a piano, the timbre of a pen flute, the timbre of violin. Okay, good. Now, we are going to see the symbols of duration, or what are called notes. 
Okay, here we have them. This one, who knows the name? The whole note. Whole note, okay? In Spanish, redonda. Four beats. Four beats, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is, is that is the duration, yeah. It, it, it is always going to last four beats, okay? Four beats. And the speed depends on uh, other words that we have not seen yet. It's uh, largo, tempo. Uh -huh. tempo, el tiempo. tiempo. Yeah. Okay. No, on the contrary, yeah. this, that is the fastest one. Actually, nowadays, this is almost not used. Okay. Okay. This is half. This is whole. This is half. Two bits. That's right. And this is? A quarter. Quarter note. Okay. This is? Eight. Eight note. Sixteenth. 32nd and 64th. Now, what is that? This is half a whole. This is a quarter of a whole. This is an eighth of the whole. This is a 16th of the whole. This is a 32nd of the whole. This is a 64th of the whole. So this whole note has everything in it. Now, the half, if you divide this in two, you have two half notes, or four quarter notes, or eight eighths, or sixteen sixteenth, and exactly. Let's, let's go back. De la? Yes. Uh -huh. Porque yo entiendo que ahí donde dice A, ¿no? Ajá. Dos de esas componen, pueden componer una corchea, ¿no? Ah, uh, ok. No. Dos de estas componen una de estas. Ajá, uh -huh. exacto. Ajá. Uh -huh. Exacto. Ok. Vamos a ver aquí atrás. Lo que pasa es que ya está pequeño allí. Sí. Bueno, aquí tenemos the whole note. Contiene dos mitades, o sea, two halves. Ok. A whole note. In ancient times, they used what was called brief. This one, okay, this is uh, the note because that's, wow. Cannot make it bigger, okay, I could, but let's see that. All right, the idea is the whole note has two halves. The half has two quarter, quarters. The quarter has two eighths. The eight has two sixteenth, the sixteen has two thirty second, and the thirty second have two sixty four. And when we come to the sixty four, it has two hundred twentieth. Twentieth, <laughs> but this is not used. <laughs> Definitely, it is not used because it would be so fast that nobody would be able to play that or to sing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, interesting. Same principle. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. Now, this, this is necessary to learn by memory, too. You need to know this. These are like the alphabet letters, okay? A, B, C, D, you have to learn this. The whole note, let's see, okay, here is better. In, in, in some English book, you are going to find this semi-brief, minim, crochet, quaver, semi-quaver, and then demi-semi-quaver, and then semi-demi-semi-quaver. <laughs> that is the... British people, they use that. The Americans are practical. I like that. They say, yeah, that's, 
let's not complicate with oh, semi, demi, semi, quaver. No, they say only the 16 or the uh, 64th, and that's it. In Spanish, we have proper names for each and every one of those uh, symbols, all right? It's la redonda, blanca, negra, corchea, semicorchea. Um, corchea, semicorchea, wow, se me fue la otra. No, uh, fusa y semifusa, eso es, fusa y semifusa, eso es todo. All right, this is necessary to learn by memory. It's absolutely necessary. Whenever you see that symbol, you know, oh, that, that is a whole note. And you know that it is equivalent to four beats. Whenever you see this one, okay, this is a half note. It's equivalent to two bits. Here it is. This one, one bit. This one, half a bit, a quarter bit, an eighth of a bit, a sixteenth of a bit, and thirty-second of a bit, and so forth. Okay, that's it, the whole. One, two, three, four. The other one is one, two, one, two. The other one is one, two, one, 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 one. And then it's ta 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 The other one is ta 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 so forth. It becomes more complicated. So Paganini was the one that used this kind of symbols in his music because his violin was so fast that it was, wow, like a lightning. Was... Paganini. Paganini. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because nobody was able to play as he used to play. Wow, wonderful. Okay. Remember those symbols, all right? Keep it in your memory and the names of them. What's the name of this one? Good. Yeah. Now, when you see this, it's the same. I've seen that before. Yeah. When you see that bar, it's like um, in this case, it's eighth. Two bars is like here. Two bars. One bar eighth. is eight. Two bars is this one. If you see other with three, is this one. It's the same exactly, except that for saving time and space and all of that to make it easier, you put bars instead of what is called? Um, you, are, you have to play all of them yeah. or to sync all of them. Uh, yeah, because those are, these are 16th. Yeah. These are 8th, these are 16th. Okay, now let's see the parts of a note. This is called the flag, this is the stem and the note head, okay? So when we go here, you, you see that we have the note head, the stem, and these are the flags, okay? <laughs> All right, questions so far? No questions. Una pregunta. Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, aquella que lleva dos este, reglas. Oh, sorry. La, aquella. Esas se tocan, allí no serían ni cuatro ni ocho, serían dieciséis. No, aquí, es ah, importante aclarar eso. Las dos flags, the two flags, mean simply that this is twice as fast as this four. You have four here and you have four here, but this is, this is twice as fast like this. For example, you say one, two, three, four. Okay, the other one is one, two, three, four. You have to do this four, this four in the time of only two of this. One, two, three, four. This is this four has to be done on the half of time 
of this war. Can I kind of give an example of a piano before you finish? Go ahead, maybe please. Yes. Maybe hearing it will make sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the, the first one is just an example. Escuche, but it's a little bit different. Exactly. That's it. Okay. The more flax, the more flax, the faster is it. The faster it is. I repeat. The more flax, the faster it is. Mientras más banderas, así se traduciría. En 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 español tiene otro nombre. Se me olvidó. Okay. Problema, cuando uno pasa el switch para un idioma, después el otro le cuesta. I'm in English now. <laughs> okay. All right, so, again, this is speed. Speed. Okay? This is slower than this. But how much slower? Half of the speed of this one. If this goes, let's say, 60 miles per second or per hour, Let's say 60 miles per hour. This goes 30 miles per hour. You got it? When did she play? Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. The more flax, the faster it is. Okay? And this is the parts of the note. Whenever this is the head of the note, the stem and the flag. All right. Good. Now we are going to see the cleft. Go ahead. A cleft is a symbol placed at the beginning of a line of music that establishes the letter names of the lines and spaces of the step. Yes. This symbol is essential. We have the treble cleft. We have three basic cleft. The first one is treble cleft. Here it is. That is a treble cleft. Okay, get familiar with that. Okay, and that cleft is put at the beginning of the staff, at the beginning. That is the first thing you're gonna see in their song book. Let me show you. Any, any, here, who wants to see? Okay, hermana, aquí. La primera que usted va a ver allí es esa, sí. Okay. Es lo primero que usted va a ver. Aquí está. Clave se llama en español clave solo. Okay. Okay. Treble clef. Treble clef at the beginning of the staff. That is the first thing you're going to see there. All right. Okay. Based on that, we have the names. No, no, no. It's not a note. What does it? What is that for? What is the purpose of it? Remember, it begins here in the second line. It is born here, and that clef gives its name to the second line. So what is the name of that cleft? Treble cleft or G cleft. G. That's the name of it. G. Or in Spanish, sol. G. So it gives its name to the second line. So this line, when you see this symbol there, is the line of G. This line is G. So any note, any symbol there, on that line will be G. G. All right? And now after G, what do we, what do we have? A, A. A. And before? F. F. Okay, there it is. So here we have the importance of it. The G cleft gives its name, I'm repeating, 
to the second line. So all the notes that follow and are, are before it are going to receive the corresponding name to that. So if this is G, the previous space is F and the line before that space is E. So E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh-uh. No, E is me. Me, me. Okay. Mi, fa, sol, la, si, do, re, mi, fa. Okay. Very important. So we can learn it. You can learn it getting the names of the lines and the names of the spaces. This is necessary, absolutely necessary to learn by memory. Okay? It's like learning A, B, C. You have to learn it. Okay, the, the name of the first line with treble clef will be always E, then a space F, line G, space A, line B, space C, line D, space E, line F. All right? So A, G, B, D, F, the names of the five lines with treble clef. And face. Face, yes. Face. It's, it's, this is very easy to learn. All right? For our next class, I want you to bring this by memory. Okay? It's really easy. Okay, and my advice is, my recommendation is, you put, you make the five lines, or you, you can buy it, you can order it, and it's very easy to get that. And you write, and you practice. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, F, E, F. Or E, G, B, D, F, face. Like here. All right? All right, that's it. Yes, lines and spaces, both of them. Yeah, they are easy pieces. <laughs> okay, this one is very easy. You remember face. The four spaces is face, and E G B D F, the five lines. Deserve what? Fudge. Fudge. Ah, fudge. Okay. Every good boy deserves fudge. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Every good boy deserves fudge. Okay. No, porque se necesita un aparato especial. Y, pero vale como 80 dólares la afinación. ¿Lo hace más barato? Sí, este ya. Okay. Well, este, questions? Perdón, no. Este fa es low y aquel es high. Exactamente. You got it. Mm -hmm. Muy bien, muy bien. Esa es la idea. Así es. Very good. Questions? No more questions? Okay. Let's have a prayer to close our class for today. Yes. A pan flute and violin play with treble clef, G clef. That is the usual. But uh, it's possible I can play F also because I learn it, but uh, I sometimes I have some doubts. And, uh, yeah. But it's, I know it, yes. Okay. Next time, next class, we are going to be the other one, which is F. But you... Um, now, this is very important. This is the first one, and that one is the one you no, must. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's pray. <laughs>